So, the second race from Snefton about to get underway. Let's take a quick look at the grid. It's Max Bartel on pole, Ben Sims alongside him, Westy Mitchell, Simon Toyn, and Brian Morris, Chris Sharples. So that's your top six. This is um, the grid taken from the results of race one, so which means we've got lots of quick drivers in the back. We've got James Hadfield back there, Michael O'Brien, James Buncton, Perty Kaviri as well. So this should be very interesting indeed, because, of course, O'Brien, pole position uh, from qualifying, He'll be starting back there, 23rd, and he will be the driver we ride on board with for the start of the race. The lights go out, and immediately you see O'Brien picking up a play. That's Nick Arden, he's got himself ahead off the novice driver, and you know, that good start from O'Brien. Into the bulk of the field now, you're in a bit of the pit lane exit to come up on the inside into Richie's corner. And just haven't not quite had the pace he wants to for the corner because obviously he doesn't want to run into the back of the cars in front. There's somebody taking the grass. Quite tell who that was, and now O'Brien up on the inside. Look, the clouds a bit dark here at Stefton. Looks like they've got no rain. That side looks a lot better, but the uh, as it usually does. The weather coming from Richie's, and that's where it's a bit dark overhead. But it's still bright over the circuit for the moment. It's Ben Sims that's made the better start at the front. He's got ahead of Max Bartel. So Bartel in second. The rest of the field then. Head there to Agostini. It's Mitchell in third, Toy in fourth, then Morris in fifth. See if we can pick out the fast runners. There's O'Brien and Hadfield together. They're just going ahead of Louis Handel. Oh no, sorry, Joe, John Coe even, who's driving that car. It's the um, Alden, the Alden Mark 8. Handel not here this weekend, in fact. But heading back on board with O'Brien. He's picking off another car. Up on the inside into Augie's. He goes. They're still side by side. O'Brien leaving the gap there on the, um, the left hand side of the circuit. He takes the position as he turns his way through Williams. Next up, that's Andrew Wiggins. So then, with our friendly straight, using the slipstream with the Titan of Wiggins, and then we up on the inside and underneath the vehicle bridge, O'Brien gains yet another position. Kevin Stanzel we can ride on board with now. He's following Chris Sharples, turning through Bombhole and down towards Coram Curve. Down towards Murray, you can see the front runners already breaking away. This being the battle for a sixth position, Sharples ahead of Stanzel. Now the slipstream coming into effect. I think a good exit from Murray's as well for Stanzel has allowed to come up alongside as they cross the line. And Stanzel should take that sixth position as they turn into the right-hander at Richie's as they start the second lap for this race. Yeah, Stanzel gets that sixth position and more battling. This is Percy Kabiri. He's, of course, recovering as well. He's going around the outside of Nicholas uh, Ball, I think that was, in the 23 car. Yes, Nicholas Ball in the morning, Mark 20. Now down towards, uh, towards the right hander of Montreal on the inside of Rowan Svensson that time for Kaviri as he picks off the places as well. Not quite as quick as O'Brien though. Uh, down the straight then towards Agostini. Just work out where O'Brien was after that first lap. The answer to that is 10th position. 23rd to 10th in the lap for O'Brien. Great opening then lap for him there and here he comes on the inside of Sharples though he's already picked off a few more on this lap so that, that's seven seven places so gained another three places in the first four corners of this lap James Hadfield going with him pretty well so good stuff from Hadfield let's take a look at the leaders though on the Bentley straight it's Sims with Bartel looking for the slipstream so they come past our camera position. Still the Jobo in front for the Berlin of Bartel. Used the slipstream. Now we can go round the outside through Brundle, but Sims holds on to the lead then. So we've got fourth is Toy. Fifth, Brian Morris. Sixth, it's going to be a change because Michael O'Brien goes through ahead of Kevin Stanzel. And up to eighth as well is James Hadfield. So I think it was Sharples in ninth. He was just ahead of James Buckton, another person coming up through from the back. Here the leaders and into Murray's. Sims held that lead ever from the good start off the line. Simon Toyn is right there with him. Brian Morris as well. Um, good job from him there in fifth position in the Lola. There's O'Brien, he is sixth. Stanzel. 
Sutton in ahead of Hadfield in seventh, then it's Sharples in ninth, Hella Buckton, then Farrance and Meek. A huge group of cars, and Nick uh, is full, just running out wide there. And it's allowed Danny Stanzel to come through, let go on board of his dad, then Kevin. So Kevin Stanzel headed into Richie's, and we know we had Hatfield behind him, and Hatfield dives up on the inside into Richie's and gets the place done. You can see the speed that Hatfield carried through the corner. Of course, James Hatfield was running in that leading pack um, in the first race earlier this afternoon. And they made contact with the Sun Toy that damaged his nose because he had to come in to get that. Oh, I think he kind of taken off in the end, but that lost him a lap. The Sims into the hairpin again. Still leads the way. We're going to focus, battle a bit further back. But Buxton's got ahead of Sharples. That's, that's Keith Farrance. So Keith Farrance ahead of Chris Sharples. But Sharples fighting back on the inside into the Agostini hairpin. And he goes back through to the passer. He goes back ahead of the Merlin in the hands of the XV racer, Keith Farrance. So they head their way now through Hamilton. As I say, most of these rounds, battles all the way through the field. And now we focus on the battle for the lead because they're side by side as Max Bartel comes around the outside of Ben Sims heading into Brundle and if you get involved as well as Wesley Mitchell he goes through the middle of them to take the race lead a great move for Wesley Mitchell he did that uh, earlier on and then span out of Nelson doesn't do that this time so Wesley Mitchell leads the way here at Stefton in only his third race this season Sixth round of the championship, but Bartow trying to squeeze up on the inside, heading in through Corum, but isn't really a move, and that's allowed Sims now to come round the outside, he's still coming, but it's not exactly the best line to take into the corner, and that means he's actually dropped back, so it's Mitchell, Bartel and Sims, Sims led all this race up to the uh, Brundle left-hander, and now he's back in third with a gap to catch. Crosses the line then to complete lap three, a second down on leader Mitchell, now they turn through the right hander at Richie's and he carries loads of speed through the corner. Does Ben Sims. He knows he must not lose the slipstream, otherwise he won't be able to claw his way back into the battle for the lead. That's what happened at Silverstone. It's allowed Michael O'Brien to take a good victory there. And Sims now right back onto the gearbox of Max Bartel. Well and truly within use of the slipstream. The speed that he carries with Richie's was quite remarkable. Down the short straight, then between Palmer and Agostini. And Bartel's on the inside of Westy Mitchell now, then. Mitchell, yeah, Bartel can't quite get alongside Mitchell. Left you behind in that car over to his son Sam, who won the championship last season. Next time out at Cadwell Park, which takes place over 21st and 22nd of June. But we head to the Browns Hacks Grand Prix circuit for the HSCC Super Prix. Mitchell though, just um, two wheels on the grass on the exit of Oggies. After Brown's Hatch, we had the Croft for the Nostalgia Weekend and the Gold Cup at Alton Park. Back holiday in August. Ben Sims trying to come on the outside of Bartel here. The Brown's Hatch and then the Silverstone round off the season. Sims inside line then to take second away from Bartel. He gets it done. So it's Mitchell that leads out of Nelson in second position is Sims and third Bartel. Back on board, we can go with Kevin Stanzel who's been passed. That's Kaviri. Kaviri's gone on the inside of him. Kaviri trying to get past Buckton as well. As they head down towards Hamilton, Kaviri's on the inside and he gets a place there. Oh, and Stanzel slid out wider. He's on the grass on the exit of the corner. And that's relinquished. I think that's Keith Farrance has gone ahead of him. Yes, it's Farrance has gone through. And the outside goes Chris Sharp. There's a couple of places lost there. I'm running that wide for Kevin Stanzel. Didn't spin though, so could have been a lot worse. Leaders through Corum. Mitchell, Sims, Bartel. Simon Toyn wasn't quite able to go from the first lap. He didn't lose too much time, but able to close him in. And Michael O'Brien's up to fifth on the back of the grid. He's got out of Brian Morris. And there's James Hadfield chasing as well. James Buckton's got back ahead of Kaviri. They turn the way to Murray. They've got Farron, Sharples, Stanzel, Meek, Benson and Wiggins. Wiggins 
to go on board with Alex Peak in the Merlin. Mark 20. A good number of the cars are. It means Flitching by Roland Svensson in the, the Mark 17 Merlin. And the speed being carried around the corner. Svensson was a bit sideways there into the corner as well. That allowed me just to pull out a few more car lengths. Let's go back to the leaders though because they're heading down towards Agostini and Ben Sims is looking on the inside of Westy Mitchell here. Oh, he's got alongside. That halfway alongside, but Mitchell probably with the quicker exit. Or was he? Sims still on the inside. Heading into Howard and can't quite get it done though. Right hander Augies is next. Again, Mitchell using the wider lines. Sims can't quite eke himself up alongside him. Now the sixth lap of this race is a shortened race. Um, after the delays earlier in the day, last race of the day. We're going to go as tight up to the 6.30 curfew as we can. Probably give us a 16, 17 minute race. Oh, Sims just touched the grass there, which flips him into the corner. Or well, it's actually probably the best line to take. And he's still right there behind Mitchell. We're on board with Bartel, he's in third. Two Merlin in Mark 20s. Sandwich, the Jomo. JMR7 2013 runner-up Ben Sims oh, Ben Sims has won his championship in the past as has Westy Mitchell and they're side by side as they cross the line in fact I think that's the uh, completion of lap 5 indeed it is in fact 5 laps completed here at Snedden Three attempts to separate the door three. Bartel on the grass of the exit of Richie's. He held on to it and didn't actually lose any time. Big sideways moment there for Mitchell. Through the hairpin, will kill hairpin, but he stays in the lead still. The top two have managed to break away ever so slightly from Max Bartel. Now Sims left to the inside into Farmer. He's trying to squeeze his way through there, can't quite do it. That's allowed Bartel right up to the back of the top two. Now he's looking to the inside. We head down towards the Agostini hairpin. Can't do anything though. Hard on the brakes now. Down the gears into the hairpin. Second of the hairpin. Agostini hairpin. Bartel rattles over the curves on the inside of the corner. But it's still Mitchell that leads. Hamilton next up. A quick left-hander. Bartel just having to back off the throttle a bit because he was running out wide. Still though, well within the slip stream of the top two and they're getting ready to use it as they exit Williams and head down the Bentley straight. Sims right there behind Mitchell. Eyeing him up for a move. For the sixth time. Heading into the left hander at Rundle. So underneath the vehicle bridge they go side by side. Sims squeezes around the outside. He gets it done. So he goes through. Ben Sims leads ahead of Wesley Mitchell and third is Max Bartel. Let's just head back a bit further because Brian Morris has dropped into the pack. Must have had made a mistake a lap or so ago and he's side by side with Keith Farrens now. Farrens gets the move done from the inside line so he goes through. They go through the Agostini hairpin. This one on board with Michael O'Brien because it's closed in on Simon Toyne. This is the battle for fourth position heading down into Cora and their nose to tail here. What can O'Brien do? About Toyne, he's looking around the outside of Cora and giving the inside of Murray. That move's not on though. Oh, but to Toyne's out, breaks himself into Murray's. What's allowed O'Brien to come through on the inside line? He takes fourth position away there then. Let's see, head on, so do you think that another lap? There's Percy Kaviri, he turns his way through Murray's ahead of Buxton. Then there's Toyne, he's got a... Um, that being uh, Farrance, who's got himself ahead of Brian Morris. A further back, there's the 81 car, that's James Lovett, the Lola. There are lots of battles all the way through the field, as you can see. There. Here come the top three, then. They're not too far away from Nick Harding's Mark, uh, Merlin Mark 11. He's soon to be lapped. Bartel put the attack on Mitchell, can't get it done, though. They turn their way out, the Agostini hairpin. And up towards the left-hander at Hamilton.
going to look back because we've got this battle continuing between Farrant and Morris. Morris all over the back of him. Morris and the Lola. Farrant and the Merlin. You've got Spencer in the, uh, the Merlin as well. And you've got Kevin Stanzel's just gone on the inside of Andrew Wiggins. Back to the leaders there. They're heading down the Bentley straight. It's Sims leading the way. Using the six stream is uh, Westy Mitchell to claw or try and claw around the outside. Couldn't do anything about it though. An ultimate lap this last seven. We can tell there's going to be one more to go when they cross the line. Corn curve next up then. Bartel's quick through here. Nick Arden's car just up the road as well. He'll be a lap. Getting ready to start the last lap then. It's nose to tail for the lead. And darting out the sex street, Westy Mitchell. He pulls in front of Ben Sims and yes, Mitchell takes the lead. They're going to lap Arden into the right hander of Richie's. He stays well out the way. Good driving there. Bartel trying to come up alongside Simpson and Bartel won the race this morning or early this afternoon. It's possible for him to win this third position onto the last lap. It's a long last lap, lots of overtaking opportunities. As Simpson wins his way through Palmer, perfectly clipping the apex. Down towards Agostini Herbin. on the exit there. Hamilton next. This isn't an overtake opportunity for their stay. Line of stone through the corner. I think if Bartel wants to win for this, he needs to quickly pass Sims. And of course Sims wants to take the lead away from Mitchell because possibly Brundle is the last opportunity to take this. It's possible to overtake it to Murray's. You could get the run up across the line as well. But this is the real last overtaking opportunity of Ben Sims Jr. Now he's got drawn up alongside Wesley Mitchell as they turn into the left hander. Underneath the vehicle bridge they break and Sims is going to go right around the outside of Wesley Mitchell here to take the race lead. He's got the inside line for now and it takes it. And Wesley Mitchell quickly, um, I don't know if he was trying to get the cut back on Sims or defend his line to Bartel because I think if he didn't do that Bartel would have been alongside him and passed into the wrong hole. He couldn't do it though. So head down to Cora Ben Sims looking good for the win possibly but it's still pretty close. Bartel looking on the inside of Wesley Mitchell couldn't do anything there though. So it's definitely between Sims and Mitchell for the win, surely. Into the left-hander and Murray's then. Sims slides his way through the corner. Has he scrubbed any speed off by doing that? Wesley Mitchell's actually had a very good exit to the corner. He's in the Sims dream of Ben Sims and they come up across the line. The check of being prepared. He darts out the toe and they're absolutely side by side as they cross the line. Who took the victory in that one then? It was very hard to tell from the camera here. Nothing's come up on the timing screen yet. Let's have a look on board with Ben Sims. See Mitchell just coming alongside him at the last second. The slow motion replay. And it's so close to tell, but on the timing screen it says one thousandth of a second in favour of Ben Sims. How close is that? You can't get any closer than that. One thousandth of a second. So Ben Sims wins from Westy Mitchell. No closer than that without um it be an, a complete tie. So Ben Sims wins. Second is Westy Mitchell. Third, Max Bartel. Michael O'Brien finished in fourth. Less than five seconds behind after starting from the back. Simon Toyne finished fifth. James Hadfield come up to sixth with Percy Kaviri in seventh. James Buckton eighth. Keith Farrance in ninth. And Brian Morris completed the top ten. Here's how the championship order is and heading into Cadwell Park. Nobody surprised that Ben Sims is leading the way after taking three wins and three second places. He's got a 44-point lead to Max Bartel and Michael O'Brien in the third after his retirement earlier on. James Buckton's fourth in the championship with Brian Morris in fifth and just completing the two races. Tiff Liddell with sixth, just ahead of Wesley Mitchell, Percy Kaviri, Simon Toyne and Stuart Baird completing the top ten.